All right, we got something happening here. One of you claims to be the perfect camera. The other, quietly mild in its modesty. Can you tell just by looking at them, which one is which? Which is a Fuji? Which is an Olympus? Did I look at the Olympus while saying Fuji? I tricked you. You never know which one I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna give it away right now. One of you probably did that a lot smoother than the other. Or it didn't, and I'm a moron. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I imagine if it wasn't obvious then, it should be now. I'm noticing one of you handles it much smoother than the other. Do you see it? The stepping bullshit? On the right side, Fuji, this is the one complaint. Such an amazing video, like 10-bit glory, it turn a profile, and then when you just change the sun a little bit, you get this stepping amateur look like your childhood preschool bully filmed it for you. Were there people? Are they looking? They're telling that. Not that I'm one to complain. Who's the... Champion of walking downstairs stabilization. I tried to do this as fair as possible. Fuji with the 18mm Tony 2 versus Olympus with the Leica 15mm Tony 1.7. It equates into a full frame equivalent factor of close enough, assholes. Oh, Olympus, you glide down steps like a wizard. I got a bunch more lenses. We'll do a couple tests, but I just wanted to see which of you is the king for my life? I would think, like on paper, it's Fuji all the way. They have everything you'd think you'd need, but Olympus sneaks in there. It sneaks right in there and gives you stuff that you want with some minor cripplings and some major ones. So right now you're looking at Olympus with just IBIS, no digital. And we'll switch to the Fuji and then we'll put digital on both. But from what I've seen, if you watch yesterday's video or however many days ago that was, the tests were fabulous. Now we're on the Fuji, just Ibis. It's not as smooth as the Olympus. There's no way it is, but it's not terrible. It's, just, it's not very good. And all the different lenses, it didn't seem to matter really. If it had optical stabe in it or not, didn't matter. They just all were kind of shaky. Watchable, it's doable, but it's not on the level of Panasonic Olympus or even Canon now, that scares me. Okay, now we're digital on, and you can see the Olympus cropped a hell of a lot more than the Fuji does. I think Fuji might have to up that crop a little bit to be as effective. It's a 1.1 times crop, maybe bumping up to 1.2 times. If you release a wide angle lens, 12 mil, 21.8. But now what we should be seeing is the Olympus just, is there, there's a fly hovering up, ah. Uh, why do they do that? Should be taken over to the top. I'm literally walking up a hill to symbolize the fact that the Olympus is up here and the Fuji isn't, although it is. Compared to the Fuji, I'm not even walking up a hill. Full advantage to the Olympus. Probably not as stable, but it's good enough. It's good enough. It's not the same distracty, wobbly shit in the corner where you're just like, ah, what is that? <laughs> It's just so irritating. On the 10 to 24 it is. We'll get to that. We'll get to that one. Okay, now I turned the digital stabe off of Olympus. So it was just IBIS. And Fuji kept on digital and IBIS. And I've determined that Boost just does nothing. So who's smoother now? It's a bumpy ass road here. I'm gonna walk down the hill. Skylights. Who's doing that better? Which will segue us nicely into exposure. <laughs> oh, wow. Hmm. I thought Fuji only did the exposure stepping in aperture mode with the aperture closing down. It does it in every single mode, shutter, ISO, all steps. 
I've been harsh on Olympus because their exposure always looks a little dark in the screen, but when I get it back, it does a good job and it's very even. I find it's exposed nicely for the sky, but you're never like too dark. It's not like a GoPro where I have to put it at minus one EV in bright sunlight just to live or that sun will fry my ass. It's too bright and then you get into a shadow and you're completely dark. Like I don't like that. Whereas Fuji, I'm shaking, Fuji. They change, they expose for the face better, but it's an obvious change. It's pretty bad. Is there Tone coming? A Tone being? He's Tone. It's noticeable and amateur looking, especially with the stepping. And it's fast. I thought I wanted faster exposure changes. Not so sure I do. That was a lie. That's my bad on me. There's zebras on my face. Fuji. I gotta tell you, this is an area where Canon and Sony are superior to both of these in exposure, smoothness, and just making the right decision. So when it comes to autofocus, I notice the Olympus loses me on these Panasonic lenses sometimes. In fact, let's put the perfect scenario. I'm here, I look away. It better not jump. I should be able to vlog like this and talk to those people. How are you doing? Swear to God, Olympus. I just, it's trustworthy somewhat. Not really, not really. Problem is, Fuji has the same ass problem. You better not be, I can feel it. I can feel it moving in the tripod hand. Backlit and for sure, it, it struggles. These are just common scenarios. You look off, you're looking at something, and then it switches, that's bullshit. Could be cinematic. You look off and then it switches to what you looked at, potentially. Now you might not want these lenses, so I'm gonna switch it up 10 to 24 on there at 12 mil. Hopefully that calms down the warpy. And the eight to 18, I also wanna test the fisheye eight mil versus the Leica eight mil non-fish. Wow, wow, fisheye corrected as well, wow. All right, we're on the Olympus with the fisheye 8 mil. It's fish-like. You can see the warping trees. I haven't corrected it yet. I'm going to do that. When you do correct it, what's on me? It does work, but I notice some weird things do happen in the background. People get stretched out. And if I warp it too much, my shoulder gets huge. I'm getting like compliments like, oh, you look so buff today. It's like, no digital enhancements so just take this in sink it in sip it and then we're gonna switch to the Leica 8 mil which is same focal length but not I'll try to stand right here and switch the lens and keep it as close as I can so drink in that tree it does curve so don't be a freak about nature nature does curve it's not always fish Okay, now I'm on the Leica 8 to 18. Is it more normal? Because that fisheye is such a hack. It's at 1.8, so you get some subject separation, and now we're at 2.8. It's not the same. It's hard to use this lens and feel inspired to do it. It really is. It really is. You're not getting hardly any Tony. It's 5.6 equivalent. It's a bunch of bullshit. What? Digital stay back on? So I'm gonna go grab the Fuji. Don't turn. Ah, oh, I never learn. Fuji 10 to 24 at 12 mil, hoping it can compare. And then we'll see who does wide better with IBIS and digital. Okay, 10 to 24 now at 12 mil, both with digital stab on. Who is smoother for the wide angle? Because Canon can do wide angle. They got lens stab and digital and it's perfectly smooth. It's an advantage, it's too heavy. It's way too heavy to actually be used. How did the exposure change happen? There's a lot of zebras happening over there. Fuji, maybe relax, <laughs> just calm down. You could win the battle. You never know, you might be stable. So here's the Fuji, 12 mil. Have we solved the warpy conundrum? I updated the firmware on the lens, it didn't matter. They just, they can't do it. 
Only Olympus and Canon are allowed to use wide-angle lenses and tell the tale. How you doing, Olympus? Is it smoother? It better not be. It's such an advantage Micro Four Thirds has. Panasonic, well, don't worry, I'm talking about that Panasonic G100 soon. I heard about that thing. That is not flying under my radar. That better have phase detect. I ruined the video. You know what shocks me the most about these cameras? It's Olympus that has the color science that I like. After using the Fuji, I was like, huh, shirt's a little orange. It's not like I remember it. Whereas Fuji, Olympus, just does it, right? Olympus is the one to chase after. Right now, Olympus is the top, then it's Sony and Canon. Sony first now. ZV-1 looks better than most things. This is shaking, I'm heavy. You are struggling hard. Olympus, what is wrong with you? How could you? What happened to you? Speaking of, before we get to the color science, I do believe Olympus and Fuji had a boardroom meeting to decide who was allowed our love. Oh, hey, Fuji. What's that you got there? It's the X-T4. It's the perfect camera. We have every feature needed. It's basically going to outsell everything you have. Good luck with your colon camera thing. So you have IBIS now? I heard you were using magnets. How's, how's that going so far? Magnets are good. It's just you do have to offset the polarity when you make your mathematical decision on which direction to go and it's, it kind of does the opposite of everything you want it to do, but it's not bad. Well, that's nice that it's usable for you in your low standards, but at Olympus, we care for our users. We want them to glide around. We don't like when our audience throws up at the wavy, warpy shit. So we, we made a difference on the planet. Well, it's kind of hard to make a difference with a tiny micro loser sensor. Is that what you're still using? Can you see in bright daylight even? What are you at, ISO 91000 right now? Our strength is not low light, but we are allowed outside at dusk before 4 p.m. So that's our cutoff limit. Still, it looks fine. You just need a light. Just bring a light with you. All that for only two grand, huh? How'd you manage to pack it in so cheap, Olympus? It's cheaper than full frame. It was a rough year for us. We are trying to recoup some losses. It's still a good deal. We got lots of features in here. Some video features. Oh, so you're allowed to use the live ND in video and the focus limiting and exposure modes and custom modes. You can do all that in video? Well, no, it's photos only, but there's plenty of other things you can do in video. We have the cartoon mode. It's a little choppy right now. We're coming out with a firmware. No time soon, but it's a good video camera. Oh, little out of focus, Fuji. I love you so much. <laughs> if you're not exposed right, it hunts. It will hunt. We're on the glorious 35 Tony 2. Just for a relaxing scene. See? Gone. Gone. I tell you, Fuji autofocus is not what it's cracked up to be. How are you doing on Olympus 12mm Tony 1.4? Same basic area. We're in the shade. The hell happened? The hell? That is embarrassing. This is what I'm saying. Like, Canon and Sony are so polished. Their autofocus just doesn't do stuff like this. It does sometimes. I've had that Canon 35 1.8 lose me a couple times. But it's rare, and you do notice it when it happens. But Fuji seems to lose you a lot more, and it's jerky. There's some jerky things. All right, let's do this in the light now, full sunlight. Don't clip my ass, Fuji. I see the zebras. There's Olympus, bright, shiny times. Four thousandths of a shutter. I should have at least remotely tried to line them up. Sneak out of the shot there. There, I lined them up slightly better. Not even close. Why am I dreaming like that's close? So we learn nothing, honestly, if I had to grab one of these two cameras, I'm thinking I'd lean the Olympus. It's the better, it's the more stable image. It's lighter. 
the Fuji, like, it looks a little more amateur. It really does. It's unfortunate. It has slower slow motion and it has autofocus in that mode. That's nice. But the Ibis, autofocus just as reliable. I don't know. What do you guys think? Color science? I prefer Olympus. My God. Exposure too. Most times I think the Olympus at least makes it look more professional. You might be a little darker. Right now, this is the worst light anybody's ever filmed in. This should be illegal. It's not, unfortunately. I made it through without a fine. Take that. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to continue on making the test we need. <laughs> we need these. <laughs> Trust me. All right, we're done. Thanks for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.